Hi everyone. Um, this is your introduction to modeling prices and risk. We've made a short video just so that you can uh, find out a little bit more about the course and what it might involve if you choose to enroll in it. The course is going to be taught by myself, I'm Elizabeth Sheedy, and also Dr. Chris Strickland from the Lacima Group. So let me just tell you a little bit about our backgrounds, starting with me. Um, so I've been here at the university for some years now, previously at Macquarie Bank and Westpac. Um, since I've been here at the university, most of my research and teaching has been involved in financial risk modelling. Um, I've maintained links with the industry primarily through Premier, the Professional Risk Managers International Association. Turning to Chris, um, Chris Strickland is um, a great addition to the teaching team. His academic qualifications are from the University of Warwick, um, very highly regarded in the UK. Uh, he is a, an author in this field of energy. He's published books on uh, energy derivatives and risk modelling. Uh, his company, uh, Lacima Analytics, provides consulting and software services to firms that are concerned about modelling uh, uh, commodity, cash flows, energy prices and so forth. Uh, so he brings remarkable experience to this course uh, and I feel very confident that you're going to enjoy the combination of uh, our expertise and, uh, and hopefully you'll learn something new about uh, the modelling of prices and risk. The course focuses on assets that trade in liquid markets such as currencies and equities. These liquid markets have certain common characteristics from a modelling perspective. But starting from 2014, the course is going to have an increasing emphasis on commodity and energy markets. And this is not surprising given the importance of these markets for non-financial corporations and the financial institutions and consultants that serve them. Here you'll notice in this chart of aluminium prices that some commodities have a feature that we call mean reversion. Do you notice that uh, in this period from 2004 to 2013, the price of aluminium has basically stayed within a range between about $1,200 and $3,300. We call this a mean reversion characteristic and we have special models that are suitable for capturing this phenomenon. One of the things I'd like to emphasise about this course is that our focus is not on modelling for its own sake, but rather to think about the applications. Okay? What are the decisions that might flow from our models? So for example, in a trading context, we might have to make choices about what are the appropriate trading limits or how large should the uh, initial margin be. We might need to make choices about the extent of capital we need as a buffer to protect our organisation against disaster. These days there's increasingly emphasis on risk adjusted performance measurement. So that assumes that there must be some way of measuring risk. We also need to think about our stakeholders. How can we inform them about the risks involved in their investment uh, or in uh, their, uh, the company that they are thinking of investing in? Um, our models can help us to describe the range of possible outcomes. For non-financial corporations such as resources companies, energy companies, they need to think about valuing projects or, or valuing a, an entire firm. So it becomes very relevant to think about what might happen to future prices and, and the range of future prices over the next, not just the next day, um, but months or even years into the future. And then there's also decisions like whether to diversify a portfolio, whether to exercise real options and so forth. So as you can see, there's many applications of these risk models and our emphasis throughout the course will very much be thinking about the management implications of our various modelling choices. One of the concerns that people often have about this course is whether or not they have sufficient mathematical ability. 
Well, let me first emphasize that this is definitely not a course for quants. Okay? We do not demand high level mathematical ability. Having said that, you should feel reasonably comfortable working with mathematical ideas. So thinking about the core units such as financial risk management, financial instruments, investments, if you felt comfortable and confident using those mathematical concepts, um, you shouldn't notice a dramatic increase in mathematical um, uh, demands in this unit. It's reasonably similar, I guess just more of it. You should certainly be confident in Excel. You should be comfortable because a lot of class time will actually be spent playing around with models in Excel. And you'll probably find that uh, your modeling skills develop during the course. So the kind of student that excels in modeling prices and risk is someone who has a good analytical mind, uh, who is questioning and skeptical, who is not just you know, plugging numbers into formulas, but thinking about what does this actually mean? What are the implications of this particular model? We put a lot of emphasis on communication because I'm yeah, I believe strongly that having good quantitative models can actually be counterproductive if you don't have the ability to communicate clearly the implications of the models. So students who do well in this unit have to be able to interpret and explain technical information to a non-technical audience. You might be interested to know that we also think about some of the ethical considerations in modelling. Um, so that also takes us beyond just the mathematics. The type of model that we use depends on the particular application. We can broadly break down our models into two kinds of groups. The, the models that work really well for short horizons or for longer. So starting with the short horizon case, this kind is particularly useful for trading portfolios or some investment portfolios. And here the horizon for modelling prices and risk could be a matter of days. Then when we start to come to non-financial corporations who are often um, modelling cash flows over months and years, uh, we tend to use different types of models with a longer term focus. Then another consideration uh, in many situations is that we have to think about correlations between markets. For example, uh, a resources company might have to look at the correlation between the currency and the commodity price. Or a fund manager might need to look at the correlation between two different equity markets. Another focus um, of our analysis in this course will be looking at some of the special features of financial markets which we could think of as violations of normality. So we see that in times of market turbulence we can have some very extreme market returns such as these that I'm pointing to here. Very large returns both in the down and in the up direction. So our models need to be able to capture these extreme events. And we also need to capture the tendency uh, for volatility clustering. In other words, this tendency for a lot of the large returns, both up and down, to be concentrated in a short space of time. Uh, so it turns out that we can harness this volatility clustering feature to forecast volatility, especially over short horizons.